Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. The car was all frosted up today, so I had to, uh, to remove the, um, the frost. It's the first time this year. It's kind of nice, though. Nice that winter is coming. I'm very hyped for Christmas. It's my favorite holiday, no doubt. Anyways, <coughs> I, uh, I hope you're hyped for the season as well. Whatever season you have, where you are. So... Today, Petabyte writes in, asking what kind of car I drive, and um, if I like to have nice things, and how do I feel about materialistic things in general, I guess. So, thank you for that question, Petabyte. It's a little bit of an unusual question, but I do advertise that I will talk about anything on this channel. So, uh, thank you for that. Um, so, this is a Volvo V60 from 2012 uh, that... I picked up in 2015 and it's a diesel car and it runs quite nicely it's not the fastest car it's, um, it's a station wagon as the Americans call it uh, here we call it a combi but it's a it's a four-door pretty nice car and I got a big car cuz because uh, I had a dog back then but the dog has since passed now I have a cat, and um, she would fit in a smaller car, but I don't, I, I don't dislike the car. I like the car. I see no reason to change something that works. And of course, I'm Swedish, so I have to drive a Volvo. It's just that. Uh, it's just how it goes. Uh, anyways, um, <clears throat> but about materialistic things, that was never really something that interested me. Um, at least not in the, in the whole, like, buying actually nice things, um, because I did not grow up rich, um, I grew up, I grew up, uh, with a, in a single parent household, and, um, my mom, she was struggling to make ends meet, uh, throughout childhood, so... It was very surprising and new to me when um, some money initially came into my life through this career. And I did not know how to spend it wisely. Um, I didn't know what kind of things there were that I now had access to. So I didn't end up seeking out, seeking out those things. Um, of course, what I ended up seeking out instead was drugs, because I knew that you could buy drugs with money. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's how it goes for a lot of people. Like, um, you come into some money and you don't know, you don't know anything about spending money, so you end up spending it on drugs, because that's like the, the thing that you know, um, which costs a lot of money. Uh, and I was no different. And even though I don't do that anymore, I don't spend money on that, um, I still, I still don't know what I would spend money on. <laughs> I could never figure it out, and because of that, I, I don't, I didn't end up having a lot of things. I, uh, I have a modest home with uh, modest belongings. Um, now, I will say that uh, having worked at big tech companies, of course, they pay well. Everybody knows that, and um, I was no exception to that. But I never bought um, anything persistent with it. I just spent all my money on um, consumables and temporary pleasures, I guess, like things that seemed interesting in the moment, but it's, it's, it's like um, a mindset thing that, that like I, I don't have the mindset of the, um, of the person who would spend money on, on sensible things or things that last. And at least I didn't have it in the past. It's something, I mean, I wasn't even aware of it. And I, was, <laughs> I wasn't able to speak like this about it in the past. So probably it is different now. Um, obviously, um, now that I've chosen a different path in life, and I don't, I don't go down the big tech company, big paycheck, big safety um, path, then obviously I have a lot less money coming in. So... Um, it's, it's a more scarce resource now, which 
uh, is good because it really makes me appreciate it in a different way, a, a way that I couldn't before. And, um, and it's, it's weird, but I, I do like it. At first, it, it was very jarring, obviously, um, to have a lot, a lot less money to go around, but I'm very, very happy with what it has done for my um, ability to relate to the world around me, I would say, because when, um, when you accept the job at a Silicon Valley company and you move out there, you don't know it, but you are, um, you are entering a funhouse ride that's fun for you, but the outside world does not come along with you. And um, you sort of, especially, this is especially true in the Bay Area, that if you work for a tech company in the, big, in the Bay Area for some time, then it is very, very impressive if you manage to hold on to you, um, any kind of reasonable idea of the value of money. Because things out there are extremely expensive compared to, to other places, and um, your employer will just keep giving you money so that you can live in that place and, and like splurge here and there. They, I mean, they don't go crazy. It's, it's, not like, uh, it's not like they pay engineers exceedingly well, but, but they do pay you to be a middle, uh, middle class, upper middle class uh, citizen in the area where you live. And in the Bay Area, compared to the rest of the world, it's a lot of money. So anyway, uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that when you go there and you have friends outside of there, um, the distance between you and your friends is going to start increasing, and you don't realize it until uh, much later. Uh, and that can be really strange. Uh, I, I know it was strange for me. It, it, I came out of there uh, with a very, very warped perception of of money, of the value of things, of the value of labor, um, and you know the value of software, the value of attention, all kinds of things that that when you're in that space, in that place, um, geographically and digitally, I suppose, you just go into a different reality where different things apply. Um, and I am very happy to be out of it. And I mean no disrespect to the people who are in there, but um, I, I function better on the outside of that world. And I remember when I first wanted to move there, I had a friend uh, who told me, because he used to live there, and he told me that this exact thing was gonna happen, and I did not believe it. <laughs> But I, I understand now what he was talking about, because that place, the Bay Area is a bubble. It's a bubble um, in many, many ways. And if you are there right now, then just think of your friends back home and talk to them every now and then, because you might you might have um, gained some distance from the person that you used to be, and, and you might not be aware of that. And, and talking to your friends back home uh, is not gonna hurt you. And it might, might help you see something that you didn't see before. Um, I'm not saying anyone should leave or anyone should do anything differently, but remember where you came from and try to relate to that every now and then, because <clears throat> it's important. It's important if you want to, if you want to be yourself, uh, I guess. Because that's something that happened to me when I moved out there. I, I stopped being myself and I became, well, maybe I didn't stop being myself, but I, I just um, cranked up the volume on myself even more. Uh, it was, it was not good for me. <laughs> Anyways, what am I trying to say here? Um, what was the question even about? I forget. Uh, materialistic things, right? So I don't have a lot of materialistic things, um, and I don't have a lot of money. I've had money in my life in the past, um, 
I've had very little, I've had um, large amounts, and now I am happy um, to have an average amount because it keeps my head cool, it keeps um, my day-to-day -day life very reasonable to me. Um, I am, I have not historically been responsible with money and it's something that I'm trying to learn and I'm glad that I don't have to learn it while having a lot of it. Um, because it just, the lessons that you learn, they matter so much more when you don't have as much to, to play with, I guess. Uh, yeah. I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if that answers the question or um, if that's interesting to anybody, but that's just some that's just my off the cuff response to the question, I guess. Um, I don't desire anything material. The one thing I do desire perhaps is to have a larger living space. Um, but it'll come one day. Um, there's a lot, I have a lot of things to learn in life and um, responsibility is something that I haven't been taken seriously until just in the last year. So I've, I've been very, very irresponsible with my health, with other people's health, with uh, money, other people's money, uh, you know, work things. Probably work, work was like the one, the one thing that I took more seriously than even my own health, but even so, um, it's it's a recent thing for me to, to try to learn how to be responsible. So um, I'm I'm taking this one day at a time, and I don't I don't think I'll end up seeking material things. It it doesn't it doesn't appeal to me. But yeah, like I said, I would. I would be happy to have a larger living space so I could have more freedom to um, work on things like, you know, making videos at any time of day, things like that. Um, or however many I wanted to, whenever I wanted to. That would be nice, but I'm in no rush and it's all good. Yeah, <laughs> it got very personal today, but um, I hope I hope I was able to answer your question. This is indeed a Volvo V60 from 2012. I uh, bought it cash. Um, and I'm happy that I did. I, I don't want to be on payments on any kind, but I do have a mortgage for my apartment, but other than that, there's no debt in my life, which is nice. And it would be nice to not have a mortgage, but all in good time, all in good time. Anyways, I guess uh, thanks for listening to this, whatever this is, <laughs> and I hope you have a great day wherever you are. Um, and thanks for hanging out with me on the commute. I'll see you next time. Bye.